The twins, Corey and Toby, are 13. They're on the go, aren't they? All the time. Live wires. <laughs> like any other little child, really. They're, they want to be into everything. And if they want to climb a tree, they'll climb one. If they fall, we'll try and catch them. <laughs> well, Iz is eight. She's a little princess when she's good. She used to be very happy and very chirpy. Bit of a nutter, really. <laughs> Amber's our little rock, isn't she? Even though she's 11. We're just like any other family. We have our ups and downs. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Something wasn't sitting right with you, was no. it? Toby was um, very problematic. We sent him for ADHD test. And just after that, the school said that the boys needed their eyes checking, so we took them to the opticians. And then it went on to seizures. Good grief, these poor boys, what else? We had a epilepsy appointment. I can remember the doctor saying something about something disease, but then he sent the letter out. And there it was in black and white. He wanted him tested for Batten's disease, which we didn't have a clue what that was or anything. We've never heard it before. Juvenile Batten disease or CLN3 disease is a rare inherited neurological disease that affects children and young adults. Initially, they develop normally until around about three to four years of age. As they get towards 10 years of age, they start to become blind. At this stage as well, they start to present with epilepsy. As the disease progresses, their speech is impaired, they lose the ability to walk, to swallow correctly. And ultimately, the children succumb of the disease around about years 15 to 35 of life. It just hit me like a bus. It just, like a hit, punch in the guts. It's like, hang on a minute. We got hold of the clinical nurse and she arranged to have bloods taken for all of us. So I see her name flash up on my phone. She gave me Amber's report to start off with. She said, Amber's fine. Um, and then she said, Izzy. And we knew. Niggly feeling in your gut. Not my little girl. Not my baby girl. There's no treatment and no cure for juvenile Batten disease. There's no disease modifying therapy. This is a fatal childhood disease. There's very little um, hope for families who are affected. So as they see their child developing through the milestones of the disease, they know that there's nothing that can actually lead to a significant improvement in quality of life. It's devastating. I don't think we'd stop crying for about a month or two, was it? Yeah, it's about, every night when you go to bed, it was just, you could let everything out. Amber started asking questions, didn't she? She was sat upstairs, I was tucking her in bed, and she said, are they going to die? I said, I said, we've all got to die at some time. I said, some sooner than others, we just don't know. And she said, why haven't I got it? Why is it just those three? And how do you explain that to an 11 year old girl? It's, it, it was hard. Well, it's incredibly important that charities like Action Medical Research fund this type of research, mainly because there's no real support by uh, government funding agencies for rare diseases, also no real support from the pharmaceutical companies. Only by getting the support that we do from charities like Action Medical Research are we able to do this research that ultimately we hope can change quality of life for people affected with these diseases. Well, we try not to think about it, don't we? And just take each, each step as it comes. If, if they've lost their mobility tomorrow, it's another hurdle that we are trying to get over. How we explain that to children, we really don't know at the, until the time comes. But uh, the one thing we know is they're fighters and they will fight everything every step of the way. One day, the funding that is being provided to us by Action Medical Research will hopefully lead towards a new treatment for this disease. If it wasn't for Action Medical Research, I could genuinely say that I don't think we would be heading in this direction. And to know that people are giving funding for our research that has this impact on um, people's lives affected with rare diseases, um, you know, that, that drives us forward and gives hope for those families who are affected by this disease. All we have is hope as a family, and not just ours, but thousands of other families that's going through the same, same as we are. So please give generously. We'd like to say thank you to Action, and thank you to everybody that is donating from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you.